Well, hello there, bowheads. It's me again, American Bowhead, coming at you with a video, a special video today about mounting your trolling motor. Now, the trolling motors have a regular outboard setup where they go click right on top of your transom and you screw them down. But let's say you don't want to cut a hole in the top of your boat so you can get the motor down in there. Who does? I'm going to give you three different ways that you can avoid cutting your boat up for the most part. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and remember I come out with videos every so often so hit the notification bell so that you're notified when they do come out. And I'll update you on the V-Twin inboard mud motor coffin boat whatever you want to call it boat project. So let's get to it. Let's go. The, uh, the feller who gave me this boat, Travis, had put this on like that. And he had it bolted on, and that's pretty good. I, I could have left it, but I don't want it to tilt down. So I could just mount it under here, cut a little notch, so it'll have space to move. And it'll at least go to there, or if I cut a notch, it'll go even farther. But I thought, why not just do it from the start with a full one? Of course, these are different for everybody. This might be different than yours, but they're all pretty similar. I have a bunch of them laying around. The other options you have are cutting a hole up here and mounting it like that. Different, different ways like that. So instead, I'm going to use this show you how to cut it down okay so let's get to it so in the name of science I'm gonna try a few things I'm gonna try a wood saw a grinder with a very thin cutoff wheel this is my jigsaw it's not bad I could eventually get through it score a line and eventually go down Well, that's working really well. If I was to suggest one, I would probably suggest that. It is leaving a bunch of melted plastic and shooting pieces of hot plastic out my legs, but it's working really well. Uh, I guess I, I'm gonna try this jigsaw just for the sake of science. Thumbs up if you have a cord like this on your grinder. It works, but I don't really have the control that I want, so I'm going to go back to the grinder. If you don't have a grinder, one of those other two methods will work. See, there's a little spot right here that's big enough. I'm just going to run my drill right here. And right here. There we go. Here's another idea that doesn't quite work as well with some of the steering systems you might have. But it's really simple and really cheap. What you do is you get these EMT connectors, the one inch ones, and the shaft slides right through them. They have these screws right here for either side of the pipe to go in, but I just keep them in to keep them from sliding past these C brackets that I screwed into the transom. 
I intended for this to be a quick release mount where I could pull this off, but my steering connection is not quick release, so I never take it off. Also, I don't want the wires from the trolling motor to be up and over the top, so I have them through the transom there. This is for a rubber stopper for the bottom of some kind of a chair or furniture leg. Then tighten the normal piece that comes with the trolling motor around and it rides on top of one of the connectors and it's actually really smooth and turns super easy. One trick with these though is they have a ridge in the very center. This is the wrong type but it has the same thing. You can see right in the middle so that when you put the pipe in that they both meet in the middle. So you have to get a file inside there and file them out so that your shaft fits through it. I'm going to be going over different types of steering in the next video or the one after the next one depending. But this is just a simple one. The good thing about this one is that it's fairly low profile. It sticks off the back of the transom very little versus some of the other ones. Like this one that sticks way far out at the back. And that one that sticks extremely far out the back. So this next method is the best method. And the only method I do for inboard mounting, but it's probably the worst as far as functionally and skill-wise, it needs to be a little more uh, attention paid to waterproofing stuff. So I'm gonna show you what I do for a simple through-hole inboard mount. Now, let's just pretend this is a hole and this is a metal drain for an RV sink. If you get the plastic one, it's too thick. The outside diameter is the same, but the inside one is smaller. And it, this won't fit through it. This is a little loose, but the plastic ones are just too thick. So that's one tip. The other tip is get one without the hole right here for the stopper, the little plug thing. So you drill a hole through the bottom of your boat. I know as scary as that is, you got to do it. Then you put this through there. Now there's some debate in my mind about whether to go down with it or up inside the boat. Either way, this will go up, your washer will go on, comes with a rubber washer with the plug, and then you screw it on. Then you have it going through. On the inside of the boat, if this is higher than the water line, that might be all you need as long as this is nice and waterproof and this you put lots of caulk in there before you shove it up in there and caulk around it and inside the threads even because that'll work its way up in there if you're not careful maybe uh then you're good and if it's on the inside of the boat you might not need this but definitely if it's on the bottom side of the boat you're gonna need this key to success. This is a bicycle inner tube. Cut it exactly to the perfect length. Slip it through. Slip both pieces through. And you see that. And then you put a clamp up as high as you can go. And actually a hose clamp works, but it tends to cut the rubber. So one or two zip ties on here is pretty good or even some tie wire i've i've found it work pretty good too 
So you have your floor of your boat, you have your sink drain, you have the rubber gasket, and you have the nut tightened. And you feed all your wires up through it. Actually, don't forget this beautiful step, which I've done this plenty of times. Forgot to put the dang wires through here. Okay. Then you can hook up your steering right here. If you wanted, this is all that have to be inside your boat. Then you put the rubber up all the way. And you're gonna wanna go below these threads probably because It'll leave a spot for water to get through. So you can see it made it, it bunched up a little bit right there because this is such a small diameter versus the tube that it made a little bunch up and it's right underneath this where these two meet. There's a little dead spot where it's not particularly tight. So I'm going to put another one right above it. So you can see that's pretty tight there. This is the general idea. So that can actually has quite a bit of movement the longer, farther down you have for this rubber to twist. If you go up a little higher, you're gonna start bunching up, but it'll still give it some twisty room. So there you go. Three different ways to mount your trolling motor. Your way might be different. Just come up with something, start tinkering around. You don't necessarily want to cut a hole in the top of your beautiful boat to clamp it down like a normal trolling motor wants to, like a normal outboard. There's a couple other options for you. Stick around if you want to see the progress of this inboard V-twin mud motor boat. And like and subscribe and share and blah, blah, blah. I appreciate you watching. Anyways, thumbs up, thanks, peace out. Gosh darn it, go build yourself a mini boat. You got no excuses. All you gotta do is do it. And remember, always wear your safety glasses, and if you don't, squint your eyes.